When people ask the question, how are the readings chosen for a specific day, there are a couple of different answers. The first answer is that centuries ago, a bunch of people got together and drafted what we call the lectionary that flows with the uh, liturgical year and highlights the feasts of the, of the year, and all of the Sundays follow an order, right? And, and the whole church reads the same readings on the same given day, so no matter where you go to church, on any given day you hear the same readings. The second answer is that uh, if the readings in the lectionary are different than the readings that the preacher prepared a sermon for, <laughs> the readings that were the that were used for the sermon are the readings that we use in the service. So that's why your readings uh, were, were different. The gospel reading was different uh, in proclamation than the one that, that's written in your, uh, in your booklet, in your, in your worship booklet. And you'll, uh, you'll also notice that the, uh, the first reading this morning was, was a challenging one. There were a lot of very challenging names. So I was, I was a little nervous this morning on my way in because I've been away for a week, and I was a little nervous about, uh, you know, coming and preaching after spending a whole day on an airplane. And then when I sat and I heard the first reading being read aloud, I realized that the reader of the first reading had the tougher job than I've got. So thank you very much for, for reading that reading for us. Uh, that was a, a difficult reading to get through because a lot of uh, difficult pronunciation, and I was glad I didn't have to do that. But it is, it, is, uh, it is wonderful to be with you on this. What we are celebrating is the Feast of All Saints. And that actually is uh, an appropriate feast to celebrate today. If we look at the prayer book, we'll see that uh, if we do not have a service on November 1st, we can transfer All Saints Day to the Sunday following November 1st. And that is what we are doing today. That's why we had the gospel reading that we had. We're celebrating the Feast of All the Saints. Now, I'd like to begin this morning uh, by telling you something that I think you probably already know, and that is that uh, I have an affinity for Aloha shirts. I, I happen to have, depending on, on if Brandy is listening, I have uh, 50 Aloha shirts. And if she's not listening, I probably have more like 70 or 80. <laughs> Okay. I have a lot of Aloha shirts. I have an affinity for Aloha shirts. Now, if you don't know what that means, Aloha shirts are what people in the Hawaiian Islands call what, what other people call Hawaiian shirts, uh, Aloha attire. Why do we call it Aloha attire? Well, uh, Aloha shirts often uh, have scenery on them that depicts uh, the scenery that you might see on the Hawaiian Islands. You might see uh, the flowers and the palm trees and the waves and uh, the culture. Right? Uh, the, the islands themselves might be depicted, uh, the, the fish or uh, the sunshine. Right? And uh, when people wear aloha attire, it expresses what people in the islands call the aloha spirit. That's something that's very important uh, in the Hawaiian islands is something called the aloha spirit. Well, we know that aloha is what you say when you want to greet somebody. Right? Aloha is, is basically saying hello. Right? But aloha is also saying goodbye. And so it's, it's the same word that you use when, when you're greeting someone or when you're leaving someone. But aloha is also uh, a word that means love. The word aloha in the Hawaiian language means love. So when you greet someone or you depart from someone, you greet and depart them with love. You actually, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful way to greet somebody with love. And that's the aloha spirit in action. The, uh, the love that people share with one another. Now, I've been fortunate to travel to Hawaii a number of times. And when I've been able to go to Hawaii, uh, I always experience the aloha spirit. From the moment I step on the plane here at Sky Harbor until the moment I get off the plane here at Sky Harbor, I feel uh, the Aloha Spirit. And I feel it uh, as, long as, uh, as long as I respect the culture and the land in Hawaii. And I, I, think, I think many people will agree with me. If you do those things, uh, you, will, uh, you will feel that Aloha Spirit. Okay. Now, yesterday... I returned from a different island destination. I went to Jamaica for the first time. I spent a week in Jamaica. And it was a wonderful experience. 
And I, I first want to say that, that the, the part I enjoyed about Jamaica the most was my interaction with the people of Jamaica. I've, I've never experienced people who were so warm and friendly and welcoming. Right? So, so that right off the bat was, was a wonderful experience uh, about Jamaica. Um, and my Aloha shirts fit in quite nicely there. I, I was able to wear Aloha shirts in Jamaica because, as you can imagine, being a, an island tropical uh, destination on a similar latitude as Hawaii, the scenery is very similar. It's an island, there's ocean, there's sunshine, there's palm trees, flowers, birds, right? So the, the Aloha attire fit in quite nicely, and, and I like that. Um, but there are also other similarities between uh, Hawaii and Jamaica. Uh, for instance, people in both places... Uh, allow themselves to relax a little bit and to slow down. Part of the uh, part of the reason is because there isn't really much uh, many places you can go. Right, you're you're on an island. It's a it's a big circle, and often when you're on an island, there's one road that goes all the way around the island. And so in the morning when you're going to work, everybody's traveling that way on the same road. And in the afternoon, when you're going home from work, everybody's traveling that way on the same road. And so uh, if you get stuck in traffic, you're probably going to be late for work. Now, the good news is uh, your boss is probably in that same traffic. <laughs> so your boss is probably going to be late for work as well. And nobody will probably even know, right? But you just kind of go with the flow, go with the flow. And, and the scenery is, is similar, the, the, the weather is similar. But there's one more thing that is similar. So in Hawaii, they talk about the aloha spirit. And in Jamaica, they talk about uh, one love. Have you ever heard one love? It's, it's a very similar concept, isn't it? It's a different language. It's, it's the English language. A lot of people in Jamaica do speak uh, English. Also, Patois is, is a common language in Jamaica. But, but English is, is one of the official languages. So, one love, which kind of means uh, the aloha spirit. Now, I got to, I got to learn about one love uh, in action. I got to have a, a, a one love experience that was, uh, that was, it was something I'll remember for the rest of my life. I was, uh, I wanted to play golf, and my hotel has a golf course that they own that's some 20 minutes away from the hotel. It's not part of the hotel itself, but there's a shuttle that comes and takes. If you want to play golf, you just get on the shuttle when they tell you at, at you know, 8 a.m. You get on the shuttle and they take you over to the golf course. Well, I brought my golf bag up to the lobby, and I waited for the shuttle. The shuttle came, and uh, the driver whose name was David, he was a wonderful guy, and uh, he and I were the only two people on the shuttle. And he and I had a wonderful conversation because it was just the two of us. We were able to, to go a little deeper than maybe we otherwise would have. And David showed me parts of the island that I would have missed otherwise. He directed me to, uh, to, to look at things. To, there, do you see that house up there that is built like a ship? And uh, do you see that river there? You know, that, that, do you see the rafts in the river there? He told me about the, the customs of the, islands of, of the island of Jamaica. He told me about the people. He told me about the economy. And I shared things with him as well. He, he had been to the United States a number of times, but uh, he, he, uh, I was able to share some things uh, with him as well. And he, he asked about uh, the weather in parts of the country, not, not, not really including Phoenix, but he said how, you know, how cold he heard that it was like in the Northeast. And he says, the closest I've ever been to snow is when I opened my refrigerator. But he and I had a, a wonderful conversation, and we arrived at the golf course after our nice little sightseeing tour. We arrived at the golf course only to discover, guess what, no golf today. There was a tournament taking place. Now, here's an example of that island lifestyle. Is I think it would have been helpful for somebody at the golf course to call somebody at the hotel and say, hey, if you get anybody walking upstairs with a golf bag, tell them not to bother today. Right? Uh, they they, they kind of missed that opportunity. Um, so I didn't get to play golf that day, uh, but the driver, David, he said, you know, I feel so disappointed on your behalf uh, that I'm going to do something special for you. I said, okay, great. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to my favorite place to eat lunch. And I said, well, hey, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Let's, let's, go, let's go have some lunch. So he took me to a place called Juicy Beef Patties. 
That's the, that's the name of the restaurant. Okay, now, now, I had discovered while I was in Jamaica that beef patties are a very important entree uh, to the Jamaican people. And what, what, a, what a beef patty is, it, it's, uh, it's meat or vegetables. It doesn't have to be beef. That's just, the, that's just the name. So you say, what kind of beef patty do you want? I want a shrimp beef patty. And you think, well, okay, I, I guess that makes sense. So beef patty is the entree itself, but the, then you tell the person what kind of, uh, what, what you want it to be stuffed with, and it looks kind of like an empanada, or maybe a, uh, a much better version of a, of a hot pocket is what it looks like, but, but much tastier. Right? He took me to uh, Juicy, and there are three places in Jamaica that, uh, that have beef patties that people uh, speak highly of. Now, I took a survey, okay, I took a survey. So the top three were uh, tasty, mothers, and juicy. Juicy was, was by far uh, most people's favorite uh, beef patty. And so I was able to go to Juicy Beef Patty. He and I had, uh, had lunch together. I bought him lunch to say thank you for bringing me to this place. Right? And uh, I bought some extra patties to take back so I could uh, share with my family. Because they didn't go, they didn't go on the golf out, uh, outing with me, and they they wanted to, they wanted to try it too. And when we're driving back to the hotel, uh, David says to me, he says, "This this is I'm going to teach you a Jamaican expression." And he said, "I want you to repeat after me." And he said, "Everything I reman," and I said, "Everything I reman," and he said, "No no no, say it like this, everything I reman." So I said, "Everything I reman." Now, what this means is that sometimes things don't go as planned, but even when they don't go as planned, something good can still happen. Right? Now, I said to him, I said, well, I, is it okay if I say it like that? Because I don't speak that way, and I don't want it to come across as, as, as offensive. I don't want to be seen as, as being offensive to you and your culture. And he said, no, I'm telling you to speak like this. this is, I'm sharing my culture with you. And then he says, have you ever heard of Jamaican One Love? And I said, yes, I have. I have. It's all over. It's, it's on t-shirts and hats and billboards. One Love. It's all, all over the island. He said, hold out your arm. I held out my arm, and he held out his arm. Our, the skin on our arms were different colors. And he said, do you see how the skin on your arm is a different color than the skin on my arm? And I said, yes, I do. And he says, what happens if, if you cut your arm and I cut my arm? The, we bleed the same color. We are all one. Okay? Now, this is an appropriate sermon that this guy preached to me. David preached to me on November 1st, All Saints Day. And how appropriate is that, that he is preaching this wonderful sermon to me about one love, right? being in one love, because All Saints Day is, is the feast of all the saints, the communion of the saints. And we are celebrating our day as a communion of saints. Right? When we talk about the word communion, it's kind of the same as that word uh, community. Community. And I think when we talk about uh, the theology of saints, right, the theology of the Aloha Spirit and of one love are really kind of what it's all about. Right? Because we are called... Uh, to be saints. And as saints, we are called to love. Right? We are called to love. Now, we have to, we have to explore, what does the word saint mean? If we're going to talk about all saints, what does the word saint mean? And we could look at the, the Latin root from where our word saint comes from, which uh, is sancti, which means holy, right? We, we see that if we, if we hear Spanish, we hear the word Santa Maria, Holy Mary, right? So it means holy. And some people ask, well, what about, uh, you know, what about certain uh, denominations that uh, have a canonization process where, they, where somebody goes through a process and that person is now called, you know, so, so it used to be uh, Mother Teresa and now she's Saint Mother Teresa. Do we have a process like that in the Episcopal Church? And the answer is no, we don't, we don't have a process for, for canonization, if, we, if you will. But I think we can say with a, a certain degree of, of certainty that, that Mother Teresa was, was pretty holy. Right? And we are called, as followers of Jesus, to be holy as well. 
We are called to be members of the communion of saints. We are called to be holy. You are holy. I am holy. Now, if I say that, it kind of makes me uncomfortable at first to say, me? Holy? I don't know about that. Am I holy? And the answer is yes. Called to be holy. Not called to be perfect. Right? So that's the distinction. Right? We're not necessarily perfect in order to be holy. Now, that doesn't mean we don't strive to be perfect. Right? We try to be perfect, and we know that we can't ever get there. We keep working toward it, but in our holiness, that's when we focus on building our relationship with God and building our relationship with other people and sharing that spirit of one love, that sh spirit of aloha with others, is by, uh, by being in that uh, communion of saints that we're called to and to be holy. So we are called to be holy. We're called to be saints. And when we say saints, we're talking about all of the saints who have come before us and all of the saints who will come after us and all of the saints who are sharing this space with us right now. Our liturgy is designed to transcend time and space. You'll listen to it in the Eucharistic prayer when we say joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. We're joining our voices with all of the saints and we're praying together and we're lifting up our prayers. We're lifting up our hopes and our dreams and our joys. And we are sharing them with each other and with God. And we know that uh, even though we're not perfect, we learn from what we, what we do. Right? So if we make a mistake, we learn from our mistakes. And we try to do better next time. That's what it means to be holy. It means to share love with one another, to love God and to always try to improve, to always try to learn. So All Saints Day is our day. It's our special day. We have feast days for other saints. We, have, we know we have the feast day of St. John the Baptist. We know we have the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today is the feast day that we all get to share with those saints, by the way. We remember them as well. All of the saints that we, that we have written down, like St. Mary, uh, St. John the Baptist, they're included too. But guess what? You're a saint. You're called to be a saint. You're called to be holy. So let's live that aloha spirit, that spirit of one love. And let's share that love with the world around us as we live into our vocation and we follow what Jesus teaches us to do in the gospel. And be a saint. Be holy. Amen.